Dang, here we go. We in here. Another edition of Gen Sports Corner back at you for Sunday, August 28th. You already know what it is. Eagles, Final 53. Phillies making a playoff push. Bryce Harper back in the, in the lineup, doing big things already, as we already know he will. And so let's talk about it. Let's talk about what the final roster is going to be like after preseason game three, who's going to make it, who didn't make the cut, and then get into this playoff push for the Phillies. And I'll talk briefly about boxing, what I thought about um, Anthony Joshua and the Usyk fight, the good, the bad, just kind of recap over it. So let's go ahead and, and go into these Eagles real quick. And let's, let's look at each position, spot by spot. So I'm looking at an article from NBCSports.com, and here's some of their predictions. Haven't really gone through it yet. I'll see which ones I agree with, and I'll see which ones I don't. So right now, at the quarterback for the Final 53, we have Jalen Hurts and Gardner Minshew. Reed Sinet, and I agree, it said he played his way out of a roster spot. He did not look good last night against the Dolphins. Looked very bad. He looked like he didn't belong. I know I'm reading this word for word, but it's, it's really what I, I believe from what my eyes tell me. My eyes tell me that Reed Sinet did not belong to be uh, belong on the football field. Now, like Stidham for the Raiders, he, he looked like he, he might have something there. But Reed Sinet, nah. I don't think he's going to make the roster. So they might end up going in there with two guys right now. Now, moving on to running back, Miles Sanders, obviously starting, Boston Scott, and then Kenny Gainwell had a really solid game yesterday. He's showing you a lot of burst, explosion, showing that his hands got better, which was the question, because you're getting the ball to him, but if you can't catch the screen passes, then you're really defeating the purpose of having you on a team. So he really helped his case last night. And then Huntley. Huntley, he flashed, but I don't think it's going to be enough, and I agree with them here. I only see the Eagles keeping three running backs. I think uh, Huntley, he might make the practice squad. I think that's where he's going to be at. So now moving on to wide receiver. A.J. Brown, our number one starter. I mean, do we need, need I say more? He was sitting there. He put up the video after Tyreek Hill put up a video of him getting a, a nice catch over Darius Slay, beating him deep. A.J. Brown put out a video of his own, like, okay, you, so you ain't going to show a clip of, of us cooking your cornerbacks? And then he put up a clip of him just getting over on Xavier and Howard. So, A.J. Brown, he's a real deal. We know that. Devonta Smith, he's been, he been having people in the torture chamber all year, I mean all summer, in, in the joint practices. You've been having guys in the torture chamber. Quez Watkins, one of the fastest guys in the NFL, he's really stepped up. And look like he's coming to his own. And I'll say it again. I hope that he can be similar to what we've seen in the mode of Azahir Hakeem way back in the day with the great show on turf. And then Zach Pascal, he came back from that illness. I don't know if it was like a stomach bug or whatever. And he's looked like he don't – he's been out there on the second team I think in the first and maybe the second preseason game, and he did not look did not look like he belonged on the field. He looked like a man amongst children. He's clearly a starter, so that was a great pickup for the Eagles. And then I think Jalen Rager makes this team over Britton Covey and Devin Allen. I think so. I think Rager has had a solid training camp. He's had some solid games so far in the preseason, and I think he's done enough to make the team. Now, whether he gets traded or not, that's another story. We don't know if he's going to be heading out of Philly or if he's done enough, put enough on tape for teams to want to trade for him. But that's something else to keep an eye out for because if he doesn't head out anywhere, I think he's your fifth wide receiver. If he does get traded, then you have to look at guys like John Hightower, Greg Ward, Devin Allen, and Britton Covey. And in particular – I would say Devin Allen and I would say Devin Allen's one to keep an eye on because he had that really big catch against the Browns in the second game. And he's a really good special teamer. And that's what you look for in a fifth wide receiver spot. So, yeah. That's something to keep an eye on. But right now, I see Jalen Rager holding that fifth spot and Devin Allen and Britton Covey going to the practice squad. Now, at tight end, we have Dallas Goddard. And then at backup tight end, we have Jack Stoll and Grant Calcaterra. 
So, hey, sixth round pick, uh, Kakatera, sixth round pick from SMU, and came back from that hamstring injury, and I think he did did just enough. I, I completely agree with the assessment here on this website. He did just enough. Richard Rod Rogers, a, a yearly candidate to be on the squad. I think this is the first year where he does not make the Eagles squad. You know, a veteran from the Packers and with the Eagles, but I don't think he makes the final 53. Now, O-line, we're looking at, hey, yeah, we got, we are top heavy and we have great depth. From left to right, left tackle to right tackle, you have Jordan Mailata, the man, the myth, the legend, and he can sing. I mean, what more can a man do? Landon Dickerson, your second round draft pick from last year out of uh, Alabama. He was a uh, starting center at Alabama, um, not last year, but the year before that, you know. So you got him now starting at left guard, Jason Kelsey at center, Isaac Samalu at right guard, and then Lane Johnson, you know what I mean, Mr. Iron Man starting at right tackle. And then your your backups, your backups, your backup left tackle, Andre Diller. He's really improved every year, and I really hope they don't trade him. He's he's really that valuable, in my opinion. If anything happens to either one of the tackles, especially Jordan Marlotta. Then you have Cam Jurgens, your third-round draft pick out of Nebraska this year, who has been on fire. He's, yo, Cam Jurgens. let me say something. Cam Jurgens is a legitimate, he could be a legitimate starter in the NFL to that. What he's been doing in that preseason, he's, he's fast, he's strong at the point of attack, he gets out on 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 uh pull plays he he does it all he's he's got the the football iq to play at this level already they got a gem in the third round in cam jurgens then sua opeta jack driscoll and then jack anderson jack anderson may or may not make it i'm not sure but i think sua opeta and driscoll round out at least the top nine and maybe jack anderson makes a 10. so that's what i have for offensive linemen right now there's a bunch of guys whose names I don't know that won't make the squad, but I think this this top nine, the top ten, has been set in stone pretty much since training camp opened. Now moving on to the defensive side, looking at defensive tackle, you have Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave, Jordan Davis, obviously your first round pick this year, and then Milton Williams. So that's four defensive tackles, and then. A fifth tackle, we're just going to call him Marlon T because I don't want to butcher his name. Uh, let's, let's say Tweepalotu. Marlon Tweepalotu may end up being your fifth defensive tackle. And he's he's been uh, a guy that just came out of nowhere, your sixth-round pick from 2021. And especially if the Eagles are going to play 3-4 uh, as, as well as a 4-3, and I think they're going to have – we haven't I haven't looked into the film deeply yet, but – you have a lot of different options when you have this many high-level defensive linemen where you can play a 4-3, you can play 3-4, you can play a 4-3 a with a lot of exotic fronts like a 4-3 over, 4-3 under, 4-3 odd. Like you have, and then you can mix, pers mix and match personnel. There's so many different things you can do. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them keep a lot of defensive tackles because you want to have a space eater and then have guys on the outside who can really pin their ears back and tell them, go eat, Wolf. So you want to have that. So those are the five that I see making it. I agree with this article here completely. Um, may, maybe not Tweet Pelotu. Maybe not, um, but we'll see. Defensive end, Brandon Graham, back from the Achilles injury. Not only is he playing well, but he looks like he's playing at a high level in his preseason. Then you have Josh Sweat on the other side. And then your backup defensive ends would be Derek Barnett and then Teron Jackson. So I think they're, it's like clear as day. These are going to be your four starters at the end. There's not really much to really talk about there. They have a lot of heavy hitters. It's, it really gets interesting when you get to linebacker. Ironically, it's something that we've complained about for years now. For years, it's been linebacker. And this is where they have a lot of depth and a lot of talent. So you have Hassan Reddick, the big offseason acquisition, hometown boy, Haddon Heights Garnet alumni, Temple alumni coming back home to Philly. And then you have uh, Patrick Johnson and then Kyron Johnson. Now, Kyron Johnson was one of your, I believe, six-round picks this year. Uh, I don't know if he's out of Kentucky. I can't remember where he's from. But it'll, it'll be interesting to see which one of the Johnsons makes this squad this year. One of them will for sure, but two of them, I don't know. But we'll see.
it's been a, a pretty pretty good battle this year between those two. Now, uh, middle linebacker, um, and the other spot, you have T.J. Edwards, Kaiser White, Nicobe Dean, bam, 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 easy, easy as day. Davion Taylor and Sean Bradley, they're they're clear cut. They're going to make the team. I mean, it's it's really no question about Davion Taylor and Sean Bradley. So, I mean, those five written in stone. I mean, it's, well, the the amount of depth there is crazy. T.J. Edwards and Kaiser White have been playing out of their minds, and if Nicobe Dean is your backup, you're in a really good spot at linebacker. That's all I have to say there. Now, at cornerback, you have big play Slay. Don't call him. We're not gonna call him his first name. He's he's Slay. Big play. Then across from him, other uh, uh, cornerback spot, you have James Bradbury, and then in the slot we have Avante Maddox, and then at the two backup cornerback positions, backing up Slay and Bradbury, you have Zach McPherson, who's building off an already strong year from last year, continues to improve. He has a lot of potential. Slay has already mentioned that he looks at Zach as a guy that can eventually take over the mantle for him when he's he's gone from the team. So that says a lot. That's high praise. And then Josh Job, who out of Alabama, hey, he played at a under a, an NFL caliber coach in Nick Saban under defenses at, that are perennially NFL cali caliber and it showed on the field. I mean, Josh Job, he's been consistent in the past game. He's been consistent coming up in run support. He's definitely going to make the team. Now, Josiah, Josiah Scott, I don't know about that one. He might make it. I'm, I'm going to say no, though. I'm going I'm to say he doesn't make it. That's just me. I, I don't think he makes the team, but we'll see. Uh, moving on to safety, we have Marcus Epps, Anthony Harris, who's going to be your two starters, probably, and then Kayvon Wallace and Jaquiski Tart. I'll be interested to see whether Tart is able to push for a starting spot. But right now, he's a backup. But he's he's bought you everything you thought you would get that he showed over in San Francisco. The hard hits, the solid tackling, being where he's supposed to be when he's supposed to be there. So, yeah. That's 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 where I'm at with it. I, I know some of the other guys have better tape, like they're saying here, but I, I'm gonna go with uh, with Tart here. And then uh, special team these guys, kickers, long snapper. You have Jake Elliott, uh, Sipos, and then obviously Rick Lozado is your long snapper. There's no competition there. But you know Sipos, he, he gonna he gonna come into form, man. He's he's really good with ball placement. I think he's a call from corner specialist, so I think he's gonna be just fine. So your practice squad. Uh, standout names, in my opinion, and I agree with a lot of these names on here. Um, Britton Covey, you know, your, your man out of Utah, 5'8", return specialist, just a Swiss Army knife. Hopefully, he can be your Darren Sproles of the future. I think he needs a little more seasoning. I think a year in the practice squad will do him well. And then um, Devin Allen. Hopefully, if he's on the practice squad, he doesn't get snatched up by somebody else. So, yeah. That's that's where I see it. That's let me know what you guys think about the final fifty three. Who you think is going to make it? If there's anybody you disagree with that I said will make it, and then let's go ahead and move on to these Philadelphia Phillies. Been on fire lately. Right now, last time I checked, they were down one nothing to the Pirates. Pirates are trying their best not to get swept. The Phillies have won two against the Pirates uh, Saturday night and then Friday night. Kyle Gibson had a nice win last night. He had eight strikeouts over seven or eight innings, I believe. Something like that. Looked really good last night. Breaking ball was looking phenomenal. Great bait break. He was just getting he was getting in front of batters and then just putting them away. Yeah, seven innings, six hits, eight strikeouts. Six nothing victory over the Pirates. Nick Castellanos has been on fire. He's been on fire lately. And he's really brought his average up and he's been hitting home runs, hitting hitting doubles. Really hitting well with runners in scoring position. Not just him, but the whole team. And that's a big reason why we've made this push. And we're 17 games over 500. We haven't been that good since 2011. So that was the last time we went to the playoffs. Just saying. And then, obviously, the man, the myth, the legend, Bryce Harper, back in the lineup, making an impact instantly putting the ball in play, hitting the ball hard, and just doing what Bryce does. He's doing Bryce Harper things. You know what I mean? 
So, you know, we, we've uh, won our last six games. We're sitting solidly right now in the second wild card spot. So right now it's the Atlanta Braves in the first wild card spot, 79 and 49. And then we are sitting in the second wild card spot at 72 and 55. We are, as it stands right now, six and a half games behind the Atlanta Braves. And we are two and a half games ahead of the Padres for the third wild card spot. And five games ahead of the Milwaukee Brewers uh, right now. They are sitting right outside the, the third wild card spot behind the San Diego Padres. So we're in a really good spot right now. I love what we're doing. Hitting the ball well. The pitching is very, very good. Noah Syndergaard has definitely been one of the, the best additions we've had in a while. He's pitching solid. You know, like I said before my last video, will he get back up to 99 miles an hour? I don't know, but he's still throwing that sinker at 94, 95. Great breaking pitches, good location. Man, we, we have that we have that third spot in the lineup, and I mean, excuse me, in the rotation solidified. Don't have to worry about that. And then the bullpen has been playing very well. Uh, Robertson still pitching extremely well coming up. Uh, from that trade from the Cubs, he was coming off of that surgery, and I remember a game a couple games back where he blew the save against the Mets, but it really wasn't his fault. The bullpen was wore out from the game before, and he came out and said, "Yo, if you guys need me, I got you." And you know they, they didn't have anybody else in the bullpen. He gave up two runs. I get it, but it's really the heart and the guts that he showed. Those are the moments that bond a team and help build you as you're going towards the playoffs because you know if I'm down I can look to my homie on my right I can look to my homie on my left they're going to help pick me up and then when they down vice versa I'm going to help pick them up and that's what really really strong teams are made out of so this this Phillies team they're really doing the things they need to do down the stretch beating the teams they're supposed to you know they got the they swept the 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 Nats early on in August they won against the Marlins. They lost two series, however, against the Mets, unfortunately. And, you know, we're done the series with the Mets this year. But still, we came back. We won a series with the Reds, and then we swept them in another series. And now, hopefully, we'll see if we can get the sweep over the Pirates. But we're beating the teams, the bad teams. We're, we're beating them and winning these series. And that's really crucial to not just getting into the playoffs, uh, improving our positioning, but also building up that camaraderie and building up that momentum going into the playoffs. So, you know, we, we let's look at this lineup right now. You have Castellanos, like I said, heating up. He's hitting 268 now, brought that average on up, getting the home runs up. He had a home run against the Reds, and um, he had one last night as well, I believe. Got that OPS up over 700, which is a must for a guy like him, a player of his caliber. Reese Hoskins hitting 247, 26 home runs, OPS of 811, playing very well. Kyle Schwarber, OPS of 805, 35 home runs, 73 RBI. I mean, like, Kyle Schwarber's been on fire this whole year. Him and Reese Hoskins and JT Veramuto have kept this team afloat while Bryce Harper and Gene Segura were injured. Bryce and Stott um, been playing well as of late being really clutch with his hits. He had a clutch hit last night. JT Realmuto, Mr. Consistent, OPS of 800, hitting 272, 14 uh, home runs, 64 RBI, but really hitting well with runners in scoring position as he did again last night. He's really, he bounced back this year and he's having a very, very good year. And then Gene Segura coming back, hitting the ground running. And then Bryce Harper put, put him right back into the lineup this Friday night and he picked up like he never left the beat. Lost the beat. So this lineup, I, I love what they're doing. And we look, we are looking very, very strong coming back down the stretch, getting healthy. And the fact that they're getting healthy, and I think that they can kick it up into another gear because of that makes them even scarier than they already are. And now this pitching is is continuing to do, to do their thing. So I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So let me know what you guys think of the Phillies. I think that they end up, Locking in that second speed, uh, second seed. But you know, let me know what you guys think. 
I think that they are going to lock up that second seed and actually make a push against the Braves for that first seed in the in the wild card standings. So that's it for the Phillies, the Eagles. I gave my thoughts on those two teams. Um, I'll go a little more in depth into the Raiders next week, going to who I think their final 53 is going to be. And then there's not a whole, whole lot going on in boxing right now. I mean, you have the Triple G Canelo fight coming up in September. And if there's some news on the Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence fight, then I'll put that out as well. But right now, I think that's pretty much for this episode. Hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Sunday. Be safe, relax, and, you know what I mean, just kick back and enjoy enjoy the festivities. Uh, this episode and, and um, whether, whatever games are on or, you know, family, friends, whatever. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.